Hi everyone, Zach here, and welcome to lesson 11 in this series on making an RTS game in Unreal Engine 5. In this video, we'll be setting up our UMG widget for our clock. In the next video, we will set up the functionality for our widget. This video and this series have been brought to you by Patreon sponsors, and you too can help support this channel. And all you have to do is hit that like button below, or if you haven't already, hit that subscribe and notify icon. All right, open up your projects and we'll make a start. Okay, so here we are back inside of our editor. And what we're going to do is we are going to head over to our content browser. As you can tell, I'm literally recording this back to back for the last one. And before I forget, I am going to very quickly pause the video and submit this to source control. Hey, I'm very glad I did that. I ran into a bit of an issue submitting it. So I'm going to go to my core folder. So content core. I'm here we're going to create a new subfolder called widgets. And in widgets, we're going to create another subfolder called widget submenus. So widget submenus. All right, we'll be starting in widget submenus and then moving out to the other one. So we're going to create a new widget. So right click user interface widget blueprint. And this will be a user widget. So select that or just click user widget up here. Type in WBP game time and make sure there is not an extra E there. There isn't. Cool. Hey, there is our widget. I'm not entirely sure how I feel about there not being that panel down here. For some reason, it just does not seem to uh, make as much sense to me. So for this, we're going to go from desired from full screen to desired. Okay, there we go. The next thing we're going to do is we are going to add in a scale box. So we're going to type in scale and we want a scale box. We're just going to drop it onto there. And I'm going to name this my game time scale box. Inside of that, we're going to have a border. So we'll search for border. And we're just going to drop that into there. And this will be our game time background. So game time background. And I am going to default this to a shade of gray. So under brush and color here, not under content, color, and opacity, I'm going to set these all to 0.14, except for the alpha. The alpha I'm going to set to 0.6. So it's slightly translucent. We'll leave everything else as is for our border. Underneath that, we're going to have a horizontal box. Actually, no, we're going to do a vertical box. Sorry, I'm just trying to decide how I want this to be laid out. And this will be our game time anchor. And in here, we're going to want two horizontal boxes. So we're just going to drop one in to begin with. And this will be our uh, date anchor. Actually, we're going to have three of these. And in our date anchor, what we're going to do is we are going to grab a single bit of text. And we want text. We're going to drop that into there, into our date anchor. Sorry about that. And we're going to call this calendar text. So that is not what I meant to do. So we're going to call this calendar text. And in here, we're going to give it a, there it is, I wonder where this is at. We're going to give it a default text of bracket 30 comma, or sorry, 30 no comma, December comma now 2022. There we go. So we now have some text there. Underneath that, we're going to have another horizontal box. So in our anchor, there we go. And this will be our clock anchor. And in our clock anchor, we are going to have our text again. So we'll just grab text, drop it into there. This text will be our clock 
text and we are going to set this to default to say mm, 2460 60. Okay, now you might be wondering why I'm putting brackets around things. These are my reminder, and that bracket's technically wrong, but these are my reminder that this is dummy text and that we're gonna be filling it in. And unfortunately, there we go. We're gonna do fill and we're going to center align it so it just lines up in the center there nicely. Next to this, we are going to have a button. And this button will convert between a 24 hour clock and a 12 hour clock. There we go. And again, I want that also centered and filled. Apparently that did not work the way I wanted it to. So let's just go auto and then go back to fill on this. Sorry, there's been a bit of a jump. I'm trying to figure out how to sort this. I mean, the easiest way to do this will be to actually use spacers, but honestly, I can't be bothered. We're gonna leave it like this for now. This isn't, I'm not teaching the visual side of things, I'm teaching the coding side. So in this button, which we will rename as our time conversion button, we will add text in. So let's search for text, grab that text. Ooh, that is way too big. And we will resize this text downwards. So we're gonna change the font size of it to, let's try 16. So we want, so let's open up font. Under font, we have size. We'll change this down to 16. And in our text, all I'm gonna do is put the number 24 in. There we go. Okay, so we now have our button there. And then we are going to have one more horizontal anchor. Also, let me just rename this text as my time conversion text. Okay, so we want one more horizontal box, which we will put into our game time anchor. There we go. And in this one, we are going to have a three buttons. We'll do buttons first. Actually, no, we'll do the prog bar first. So look, we're gonna grab a progress bar and drop it into there. And we want to set that to fill. All right, we have a, and then we're gonna grab two, or sorry, three buttons. So we're just gonna drop one, two, three. I was hitting control D to do that. And for our prog bar, let's go to fill. There we go. And let's set our fill just so we can see that it's working to uh, just a random setting. There we go. And I just want to go to a slightly darker blue than this. So I'm just going to open this up and drop down to, ooh, I like that blue. Okay, there we go. So that's the blue I'm gonna use for our buttons. This will be our uh, decrease speed button. So this is decrease speed button. And this will also have a text in it. So let's just grab that. And this text we will size down to, I think 12. And then we will add in two carrots pointing to the left without the space. Okay, and then we want to take the next one and we're actually gonna copy the text for a moment. We're gonna paste it in and then we're gonna do two unbroken horizontal bars with a space between them. And then finally we'll copy it into the last button and we'll change the direction of the arrows. Okay, um, I want this to be a bit smaller. I'm just gonna see if I can make them any bit smaller, no I can't. Okay, that answers that question. So with this, what I'm going to do is I am going to rename the text here to the decrease speed button text. There we go. This will be our pause play button. So pause show play button. And this will be our pause play text. And then we have our increase speed button. 
and our increase speed text. Okay, so that is the primary part of our widget done. Not sure why it isn't compiling, but I've had that error with widgets before. And I'm just gonna click off of there, there we go. As long as you're clicked onto something, it might not always compile. Now, again, the layout isn't perfect, but I'm not an artist. I would leave that to you guys. I kind of like how the new widgets actually show what it looks like. So up here in this outer level, above our widget submenus, we're gonna create a new user interface called, well, first select the user widget part, WBP main UI. Go ahead and pop open main UI. And in here, we want a canvas panel. We're gonna drop that into there. Hey, look, there's our canvas panel. And in our canvas panel, we're going to find our game time under user created, we have this WBP game time, and we're gonna just drop it onto here. And we're gonna size this to content. There we go. And well, really quickly, all we're going to do is anchor this to the upper right corner. So we're gonna to go to our anchors, there's our upper right one, we're gonna move it there, and then we're gonna move the positions to zero, zero. We'll change the alignment to one. And let's do 1.2, just so we have a bit of room, actually 1.1. And then we're gonna go down by 0.1. Let's try down by negative 0.2 instead. There we are, now we have this thing floating in the corner that has our time. For our last step in today's video, what we're going to do is then go to our player, go to our player controller, and in our player controller, we are going to spawn our widget. And the way we do that is on our event begin play, we will create a widget and then add it to our view screen or our viewport. So let's go up to the event begin play and we had the sequence up here. So what we're going to do is we are going to off the then one is create a widget. We are going to create a widget of WBP main UI. There we go. And for now, for the owning player, we're just gonna type in self, which is this player controller. We will actually need this for something else later on related to our widget. And by later on, I mean the next video. We will promote this return value to a variable called main widget ref, which will go into a references folder. And again, hey, that's a hard copy, but that's the widget is actually part of the player controller. It's owned by the player controller. It's gonna have to see it. Now that we've done that, we are going to do add to viewport. And for our last little bit we have to do, again, pulling off this widget ref, we're gonna set input mode game and UI. And that puts it in widget in focus. And then we are gonna do another cell for the player controller because we are in the player controller. And you can set if you wanna hide the mouse during capture or not, I'm gonna say no. And if you want to lock it to screen or not, I am going to lock in full screen. There we go. Okay, now we can test this out. And if it works, hey, we're on our way to actually setting up the functionality. There it is in the corner there. None of the buttons do anything, but hey, it's working and we can see the time on our bit here is showing up and we can see it in our logs if it was already at the bottom. There we go. So that takes us through everything we want to do in this video. In the next video, we will set up the functionality and text that will show up here. And if you've enjoyed working on your UMG widget and you're looking forward to doing more work on this project, make sure to hit that like button down below and make sure to hit the subscribe and notify icon. Both of those really help the channel out. Also, you can leave a comment below, which helps the channel out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you wanna take your support a bit further, consider becoming a Patreon sponsor. Patreon sponsors at upper tiers get instant access to all ongoing and completed projects on YouTube. And at other tiers get access once a project is completed. In addition, Patreon sponsors get access early to these videos. So if you have a bit of extra money and you wanna help out, you can become a Patreon sponsor.
and I look forward to seeing you in the next tutorial, and I hope that you have a wonderful day.